Hello, this is Amass Games. My name is Simon Lavender. I'm here to show you Broom Service, the card game. I still haven't played Broom Service, which uh, did win Game of the Year. And uh, that was in the Spiel des Jahres, or regarded as pretty much the best um, gaming category and awards in the world. But uh, this is a game that I really, really like, and it's a game I'm always keen to refresh myself with the rules. It's very simple, very enjoyable, it's swift, you can play it uh, with work colleagues, you can play it on your lunch break. It's for three to six players, so you can't just play it at home uh, with somebody else. It's eight plus, 15 to 30 minutes, I'd say it's around 20 typically. And uh, yeah, it's in the Alia range in this instance, but also obviously Ravensburger. So, what do you do? Well, firstly, you have to take it out. Just let you know, Alexander Pfister, the great designer, great Austrian designer, uh, is uh, behind Broom Service, and it's also got assistance here by Andreas Pelikan. So, you don't need the box for anything. What you're going to be doing is laying out some cards. But first and foremost, you need to be deciding out how many players you play with. So let me just take this out. What it's just telling you is you sort, so that's the only sort of negative you have to kind of prepare it based on the number of players. So we represent witches and we're delivering stuff. And what we're looking to do is have 10 of these um, brown cards, 11 of these green ones, 12 red, 14 purple or lavender or lilac, 16 yellow and 18 blue. You'll then be taking 17 cards each as a three player, 15 each as a four, 14 as a five and 14 as a six. With more players, you're gonna be adding in some more cards. So as an example, we can leave that there just for reference, but there's one for each player and one of these are rewards, which I'll come on to. But let's just say we're playing, I've already got it set up for four players. We leave out three of these things. These are basically bonus things that we can work towards. The game takes place over four rounds. It's very swift. There's some expansion stuff in here too. It comes with the first expansion that's inside the game. So I've chucked all those together in one thing. Additionally, I've put in all those cards for five to six players just to keep them nice and neat. This basically gives you other objectives you can work towards. So if I just chuck those away. Then you're shuffling up the cards that you have for your you know, known player count, which won't be all the cards. Well, you'll be shuffling all of them, but you won't be dealing out everything. But uh, obviously 17 cards each, if you have to spend a short amount of time just doing. Obviously make sure you don't have any, in this instance, greys or blacks. But let's just say um, we're playing this person and they've got, let's just say, this amount of cards. And we don't know what this person has, but you'll see what I'm trying to do. So you look at your hands and you arrange them. So everyone who takes their hand, they then, I mean, I personally arrange them to save, save a bit of time. For this instance, gray is fine because we're playing a uh, four player, say an example. And you can see I've got quite a few gray, but what you're picking is three cards. They all have to be a unique color. So I see what I have here and you're trying to aim to basically have in front of you certain amounts of flasks or bottles or potions. So to complete this card, you would need to have four gray out. You'll see how I get them out in a second, but as an example, I've got quite a few greys, so I should be able to do it. Um, the reason why I might uh, might not be able to will come apparent in a second, but let's say I'm gonna pick a grey, pick a blue, and let's, if I focus on this one, anything that you play this side up, you'll get a wild card, which will help you for that one. Um, but maybe I won't be able to do that one, I could work for a lilac one. I've got one of those cards. So of course, I've only got one, they might have more. So I've picked three cards. They've picked three, imagining they're all different. We haven't looked yet, but let's just play it like this. Then say I start, I, um, the trouble with going first is you kind of want to play cowardly. This is when you play it this side up. This means if anybody plays um, a brave, which is that way up, you don't lose what you've placed. Otherwise, if I go brave and play this and somebody else follows, I'll get nothing and it goes back to my hand for the next round. So let's say I go cowardly. This person sees if they've got any gray. They don't, so they say, I haven't got any gray. And this person looks, they do. Now this person might have them, they don't know, but they're gonna risk it and say, I'm going to go brave. And this person goes, and there's no harm if they go brave necessarily. They do, 
So they can mess with this person, get nothing, and they got part of the way before getting the grey section of that done. And additionally, part of the way to or doing the multicolours. So the downside with winning the card is you've got to start the next round. So, or the next turn. So now they'll go next, they'll look at their cards and go, hmm, well I might as well go for blue. So they'll go cowardly again. They're a bit cowardly, they're not certain if anyone else has got blue because it is out there. We look and we have blue. We don't want to risk something, we've already got something. They look, again now they risk it because there's only one more person to go and there's six colours in play. And they don't, so they were lucky. So they win. The last person went bra uh, brave goes next. So they've got red. Well, in this instance, yeah, you'd ideally have three different colours. Then they go, okay, well, now I've got blue, I might as well go purple. But others might have it too. They've only got one card left, but yeah, let's risk it. And uh, let's not risk it. Let's just go uh, cowardly again. Then they go and see what happens. So that basically will continue until the cards are played. You might end up playing both your cards together, which means you'll start the next round because if you went brave, you'd have to start the next round. Then, at the end of the round, you check to see if you've got any of these conditions met. Round one, that wouldn't happen. I don't think round two, typically. But round three, it's possible. But two people might achieve at the end of the round. If you do, then one person takes the card, they basically flip it over, and they would get this card, and they get five victory points at the end of the game. And somebody else would just take another one of these empty, uh, sort of not in play cards too. So the game continues until four rounds have been finished. What you do is you can then flip this over and it tells you how scoring works. So if you've got uh, only two gray at the end of the game, you'll get one victory point. You'll get the amount of blues you have, so one equals zero, but you're gonna go through all the colors, including multicolors, and then see your final score. So that's how the game progresses. It's a fun, uh, swift and uh, yeah, quick game and enjoyable, and I always find it fun to play. It's uh, quick to teach, as you can see, it hasn't been a very long video. It's small, compact, it's obviously just cards. You don't even need the uh, you know, the rule book, really. That's, that's all there is to it. And with the expansions, it just changes around how you do things too. And as you can see, they have differing numbers on which ones there is. So I can easily play this three times in a lunch hour if I happen to be taking a, a full, say, lunch hour and my food's already there or something like that. Uh, the cards are small. That's not necessarily a negative. It just, uh, it's quite handy in terms of uh, playing area as well. Uh, played it with all numbers. It all works well. It's a shame, again, you can't play it as two, perhaps. But uh, no, for what it is, the fun you get out of it. If you like um, Alexander Fister's other's games, then check out Port Royal. That is probably uh, my favorite of his. Although, whilst I didn't initially like Great Western Trail the first three times I played it, and I played it with different groups each time, the fourth time was probably my favorite, and it's a game I'm gonna get more into, I think. It seems quite open-ended, and like other games such as, um, well, they're also sort of railroad themes such as, um, Railroad Revolution, I think there's some clearer strategies than others, but you can sort of help mitigate somebody doing well at it. So, look forward to maybe doing a review for Great Western Trail as well in time. There are other games by him, including Isle of Sky, which I wasn't as enamoured by. Um, on the second game, I won it against uh, two others who are, who are a couple, and we played it as a game whereby you uh, obviously need to really keep an eye out on other opponents and uh, stopping them from getting ahead. And I think I almost uh, got their scores combined, but uh, they were just dodging a bullet there. So as you can see, nice tiny box and 273 grams. So another gram lighter for you to carry around. Alternatively, like I said, you can stick it in a deck box, which I might try to do later today. And uh, whilst it's gonna be bad weather, I'm happy to take it in the car in a smaller container and uh, show the others later. Thanks very much and enjoy the next one.